Hello there and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on audio coding. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the Humanal University of Technology. I am Renato, the instructor for these online materials, and on this tutorial we will start talking about psychoacoustic models. So basically we will use the concepts we've seen on the previous tutorial about the introduction of psychoacoustics and we use those concepts uh, together with Python to implement some psychoacoustic models. So first I will just give, uh, give an overview of many different functions we are going to use during the construction of these psychoacoustic models and I will go in more detail in some functions when we will be using them but for now I will just give an overview of many functions and then we will start seeing the application of these functions. So the goal is to have a Python example that shows the nonlinear superposition with a parameter alpha equals to 0 0.6 in the bark scale. For that, we will construct matrix which uh, does the actual superposition in the bark domain, but in a more efficient way. And we will have here a function called spreading function mat that has some, some arguments and um, it returns this spreading function matrix and we'll look uh, with more detail a bit later. And also we have here this masking threshold that returns the masking threshold as a voltage on the bark scale. And here we see that the application of the spreading function is a simple matrix multiplication where we are avoiding slow for loops. We will also use some auxiliary functions for example, we we'll use Hertz to bark, so it's a function that converts from Hertz to bark, bark to Hertz. So here we have this mapping to bark mat, which is a function that constructs a matrix W, which has ones for each a bark subband and zeros elsewhere. Here we have a function mapping to bark that uses this uh, matrix W previous calculated together with a magnitude and spectrum from the FFT and the number of subbands in FFT and we will return the magnitude mapped to the bark scale. We also have a mapping from bark mat that constructs the inverse metric, uh, mapping matrix W inverse from the matrix W for mapping back from the bark scale. And we also have this uh, mapping from bark that maps or warps the magnitude spectrum ve uh, vector in the bark scale back to the linear scale and returns the masking threshold in the linear scale. So we'll go through these uh, functions later. We will not use them all at once, but I'm just uh, going through here. Uh, so first we'll use the spreading function, mat, that um, it takes as arguments uh, half of the sampling frequency, so the Nyquist frequency, the number of subbands in the bark domain, and uh, also the coefficient alpha. So here we have some um, values, for example, for the simultaneous masking for tones at the bark uh, band 12. We have the upper slope of the spreading function. We have the lower slope of the um, spreading function. Here we are using this Hertz to bark uh, function and we are also um, defining here the, uh, the upper slope. So we have the attenuation per bark in dB, we have the lower slope, the attenuation per bark, and here finally we will get our um, matrix, the spreading function matrix. So we can look at the uh, resulting spreading function matrix if we use uh, alpha equals to 0 0.6, the sampling frequency equals to 32 kilohertz, so the Nyquist frequency will be 16 uh, kilohertz, and here how this spreading function matrix looks like as an image. So, so far we use just this spreading function mat. And we observe that we don't need any tonality estimation for this model. And usually our signal from the filter bank is like a voltage and it's not like a power as it is in this model. So we obtain a power if we square our signal 
and hence our exponent is multiplied by a factor of 2. So we get this uh, a going to 2 times a and hence our exponent becomes 0 0.6. Observe that the frequency index is on the bark scale and also we need a mapping from Hertz to bar from our linear filter bank scale to the bark scale where we apply masking. And then we will also need later an inverse mapping from bark to Hertz to apply our found masking threshold to the quantization step size of our linearly spaced subbands. So uh, have in mind that we'll go back and forth from bark domain to linear domain, Hertz to barks and converting things uh, to bark domain and from bark domain.